Ah, welcome viewers to an inaugural episode of Let's Play Heroes for, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic for, uh, Winds of War, I think that's the title of one of the expansions or something. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go through the campaigns. This is Bezlinir here, coming at ya. Uh, whoa, 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 I'm not coming at you. don't worry. Put your knife away, I'm not coming at you. I'm just, I'm here. So we're going to start with the True Blade. This is, uh, this is the only campaign I... have been the loyal squire of Lord Lysander for more than 12 years. My name is not him. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, this is Lysander's squire. He's talking. Y you can hear how compressed and bad this audio important is. Important, because history takes no notice of people like me. Like... This one's not too bad, but it's... The, the next one is really bad. The next one in the series. Uh, anyway, this... Like, look, the, the thing is, it's not that the story is bad, but this is just so long. I'm uh, I'm going to read this one for you, okay? And that that's going to be it. Uh, the story is not bad. It's just really long-winded. It reminds me of Might and Magic 9. They just didn't know how to relay the story, and they just went for blocks of text. So, he says, I have been the loyal squire of... Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, just scan, scan forward in the video if you don't want to watch this stuff. I'm probably not even going to read all of it. I have been the loyal squire of Lord Lysander for twelve years. My name is not important because history takes no notice of people such as myself. Lysander, however, is different. I have known since I first set eyes on him that he would change the world. I'm reading like I'm reading didactically out of a book. That's enough of that. Anyway, it's like, it's just like, who cares, dude? Shut up. Anyway, I remember seeing a strategy on GameFAQs for what they were recommending with this, and I don't know about that. So, uh, eventually you're going to want to build a caravan that allows you to send troops between uh, towns, which is pretty influential here. Uh, if you play your cards right, you're not going to get attacked on this map, so not much point in building a castle. Uh, unlike in previous games, I don't think that, that doesn't increase your... Uh, troop generation it only increases your defense and uh, it is possible to get attacked and I'll show you this right now This is the main thing to know about this map Okay, you have your area right over here, right and down here. There's a bunch of uh, really strong guards uh, I Think I forget what they are. They're like Griffin or Chimera or something. We'll see and then over here uh, Just to, like southeast of this little magi here you can see the edge of this castle crenellation. This actually leads into en enemy territory, but it's guarded by a strong, uh, a strong NPC, like one of these, and a strong army. It's actually, yeah, that's what you would call it, I feel like, in this game. Okay, so, uh, what's basically the, they've ensured in this map that until you, uh, beat one of these strong NPCs, unless you wait insanely long, uh, you, you're pretty much safe over here. But uh, if you take too much time, which you might well the first time you play this map because you're unfamiliar with it, then you could get overwhelmed because it feels like you have all the time in the world. But if you let like four months go by, uh, when you do get down to this territory that's all blacked out, it's going to be uh, the enemies are going to have all the castles. They're going to be consolidated. They're going to be really strong and it might be impossible to beat them at that point. Uh, so, yeah, okay. The story of this... Uh, the story of this is, uh, and if you look on the, if you look on these maps, it's hard to tell at first. It's hard to figure out, but the, the, the town that's highlighted in yellow on the tab is which town it is. So you'll, you'll come to, uh, to get used to that. The only thing that's awkward is if, if you want to use the, um, the caravan, do you have to go to the town that you want to, uh, bring the troops to? click on the caravan and then find the town you want to transfer them from. You can't do it the other way around because it, it won't let you change the destination town. You have to go to the town where you want the troops from, or the the town that you want the troops to arrive in, and then, yeah. Uh, so this is all, this is going to be pretty cut and dry. It should be pretty quick to get started. Um, there's just a few things to be careful of at first. I'm going to keep gold for XP. Uh, the major key to this... Uh, pardon me. The major key to this scenario, or this campaign, is to get Lysander really high in level. And all these people, uh, you want to develop their combat and their combat abilities. 
Because by the third map in this campaign, you're basically gonna be, uh... Uh... W be winning all the fights with your heroes. And that's just the way they design the scenario. Later on, they don't give you access to many troops, and, uh... It's because heroes can fight in this game. That's how that winds up. The only problem is that heroes are really weak, but... I mean, there's not much you can do about it. Um... So I don't like pikemen very much. I usually go ballista. Um, so let's see. Won't hurt to get this person a few extra troops, but I think for now I'm gonna go with a city hall. And then we'll uh, we gotta make sure we get. We, there's a lot of um, a lot of sawmills and stuff to get. So gotta do that. Each one of these towns I think has a sawmill and a ore pit by it and uh, so that's pretty much the first thing you want to do is take those. Um, let me see something here. What's closer over here? Ore pit. So I might take the sawmill first over here. Alright. Then we'll have one of each. Hey, we got a badge of courage. That'll help our morale a little bit. So it looks like we're gonna do a fight. Yeah, okay. I got time for that. I hope this LP doesn't suck. Uh, there's already a good LP going. Oh, one thing that's confusing to figure out is how your army's formation is going to turn out when you actually get in battle, and sometimes you have to save before a battle, and then, like, your formation will just be atrocious, and you'll have to fix it before the battle, which can definitely mean the difference between life and death. And it really sucks early on because it's easy to lose heroes when they're in low and level, and, you know, as would be the case here, it's very important and this guy got screwed uh, this stuff is ridiculous for some reason he can't hit those things even though he's yeah that's weirdness um, I'm gonna back her off it's probably not gonna help but um, I'll just heal her up uh, whatever I mean she can't do a whole lot else right now uh, these squires can do a stun which is alright but you'll tend to lose them pretty quick the, the archers are pretty good for the most part. Uh, as with most Heroes games, it's hard to keep them protected. That's the main key. Do, uh, you can't... It's not a good idea to try to take out those satyrs. Uh, that's a lot of armies right there. And the satyrs are pretty high in level, so they will kill you. Don't even try it, buddy. So, nice how, like, opera starts every time you go into one of these things. Everybody want to act like they got an opera to sing. <laughs> but, but, oh, uh, they do have an opera to sing. <laughs> well, uh, I tip my hat to you, good sir. You truly are singing opera. <laughs> Twas no joke. Better be. Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, peasants can be... Alright, they can be helpful. Uh, one thing you got to be careful of, as you can see, there's a crossbow man thing down there. Now, I don't remember a whole lot about that. I just know if you, if you take the stock troops that you're going to get from this town and try to go down there, you're going to probably lose your hero. You might win the fight. Uh, if you do lose your hero, keep in mind, just move that, as long as it's not Lysander. I'll tell you, you can lose Lysander and still not lose the game in this scenario, but only if you're sieging a castle. So when you go back to a castle, your uh, character... When you go back to a castle, your heroes resurrect. So, uh, that's gonna help you out. Jeez, uh, let's see. Move these over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack these things. I don't know what you're gonna do. Um, yeah. So if, if in, as a for instance, if you got to that thing. Uh, that battle and you tried to uh... and you lost your you lost your hero uh, you just have to move that army back to back to the castle that's right there and your hero will res back uh, which is good because you'll want them later on I typically just try to not lose the hero and not lose too many troops because uh, the design of this game still makes it a real uh, you know, it's largely about attrition. Oh. 
Well, these guys made my decision for me about what I was going to do. Uh, the sprites have a lot of mobility. Wolves are pretty strong. Can't lose Lysander, obviously. Um, this is a this is a sign for you to know whether or not things are strong or weak. If if you're near a strong army, they'll close with you and try to fight you uh, past the end of your turn. But if if you're stronger than the army, they won't try to. Uh, come over, they'll just stay where they are. <laughs> They're like, you You're like, you know better. They're like, yeah. I'm not gonna mess with him. He's tough. Uh, okay, we're, we're, we're gonna get basic offense. It's not really a big deal. Um, the main thing you want to get is uh, combat and then start working on melee and stuff. I'm not gonna get basic leadership. I don't want that. Um, but I guess I might as well take all this stuff, uh, since I'm here and that guy came over anyway. These aren't artifacts, they're just, uh, weapons and armor. That's uh, Pandora's box. Happens to be a rare example of a good thing you can get out of one. Yay. <laughs> I like good things. Birthday cake. Birthday cake ice cream. Uh, birthday cake ice cream with, like, Donuts. That's, that all sounds pretty good, right? Alright, I have to constantly check on my time because I have to record this in desktop mode, which does not give me access to uh, information about how long I've been recording. Uh, one thing that this is kind of lacking is... Okay, I don't think we got the ore pit because it didn't have a flag over it. It doesn't give you very good information on that. All right, let's keep going. Should be able to take the sawmill. I'm not gonna mess with that other place, the troop generator, until later. I don't want to get too close to those guys because I don't want to be locked in a fight with them. But locked up in a fight with these fools. All right, so we want to get some uh, troop structures over here for um, Lysander, because he's going to have to go out to sea, and he's going to be fighting some mermaids and stuff. So I might not build troop structures over here as soon. Oh, I guess I will, if they don't cost too much. Alright. Uh, it makes a huge difference whether you get a good fast start in here. Uh, and it can, like, you can have dramatically different results if you just, like, uh, can manage to win a close fight with strategy. Okay, weeks later, Lord Lysander departed, so that he has to, that's the goal of this thing, is to retake gold mines. And this guy, Sir Wharton, is pretending to be the king because he has the Griffin Heart Blade, which is lore. And Lysander is trying to strategize how to get Recognize. He's just like, recognize, fools. Uh, yeah. So that's how that goes. Uh, I'm debating. Okay, yeah, I don't need to. Because I think I'm going to probably complete this circuit and come back before I actually go out to sea. Alright. Gotta be careful because you don't want to wind up under the sea. Because life is not much better down where it's wetter. Life is much worse. <laughs> We're not built for aquatic life, man. We're human beings, bro. You know? So these, uh, I think they're called conscripts or something. They're useful in the beginning. As soon as it's convenient, it's going to be a good idea to trade those out for something stronger, but... Alright, i got to check on my time again. Okay, I got time. I'm aiming for uh, episode lengths between like 18 and 20 minutes here. Uh, right now, most of my heroes aren't all that useful. Uh, this, I'm going to keep this hero around, but we're not going to use her that much once we get Prospero. If you've uh, played this before, then you know about Prospero. Uh, I think I just now realized that, that, that I'm pretty sure that that's a Shakespeare reference, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Ooh, a Shakespeare reference. Suddenly, I have newfound respect for these guys. God dang it, man. 
Your heroes just start out weak. That's like the whole challenge of this game is just not getting your heroes killed early on. It's insane. Like, they can't kill anything. They can't kill, like, the weakest troops. And when you see... When you see how strong Lysander gets, you'll realize just how ridiculous that is. Right, I'm gonna get base resurrection with her. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, that'll help to cut down on the uh, attrition of our troops. So we don't need to go in this direction. This is a big thing. Uh, you need a lot of... There's some strong enemies over there that guard a quest object that you actually need to get Prospero. I'm actually at the point where I kind of need to think about what I'm going to do next. I think I need some more troops. I can't do much here. I was going to do that. Come over. Right. <laughs> the funny thing is I, I did really well the last when I test played this, but I, it's hard to remember exactly what you did. You know, it's just a question of like prioritizing with your guys. What's the best or easiest thing to do? Uh, I'm already noticing, like, one thing about this is that the fights are much faster than they were at, at this juncture. Um, these fights are not too bad. Like, if I, if you'll notice that I turned on the movement shadow, and if I have to right-click on these guys to bring up their movement shadow. So, like, th that helps me strategize to as to who to attack at a given time. But, uh, I mean, it's... Figuring out what's an obstacle and how and where to move your guys is a bit tricky, but, um, you know, that's that's about all the trick that there really is to this, honestly. Okay. That is about all the trick that there really is to this. Alright, I'm going to take these guys out with peasants. They can't do much more than that. This uh, hero is going to take a bit of a beating. Alright, I should probably move him out of the way, but I'm not going to. He should be able to handle a, a couple of leprechauns. You know? Just take their lucky charms right away from him. Alright, he's doing good. He can handle, uh, you know, mobs on that scale. He just can't handle anything really strong yet. And he, eh, he, he'll he take a while to get good. And he'll never be as good as Lysander. I don't... I'm not sure exactly why Lysander gets, like, way better. It's something about the way that he's programmed. Okay, if I recall, these are... Yeah, those satyrs, they're fairly tough. They're not really bad, but the real hazard over here is the thing that's down there. Uh, there is honestly some stuff over here, including... This pikeman recruition station, but uh, I, you know what? That's that's about good for one episode. So I'll just conclude this. Uh, so this is Bezlinier signing out of another episode of Let's Play Heroes of Might and Magic Four, and I'll see you next time, viewer. So thanks for watching.